Duck, Brandon. What's with the Guinness? I don't know. It's the power of the tap. New barrel and everything. Well, there's the harp on him. Yeah. yeah. Why would you not switch them around with a man of a pint of stout? No. What about the harp drinkers? The harp drinkers? <laughs> you might tell me to do it in the morning. Have a bottle. I am having a bottle. I am not happy about it now. My life like going after that. What the hell? Good for the worms. I'd say you got a right couple of worms, all right. That's some wind, isn't it? Yes. Must have been against you, was it? Was was against me till I came around the knock. Bit of a shelter then. That's the funny one. It's coming from the north. Yeah. Spy on enough, though. Ah, yeah, it's spoiled enough. Were you here well, today? I wasn't, no. I had the sisters over, doing their rounds, checking up on me. Checking their investments, huh? Oh, yeah. Of course, they don't have a fucking clue what they're looking for, you know. They're just vaguely, you know, keeping the pressure on you. This is it. Let me sell the top field. Ah, you don't use it much. No, no, I don't. Too much trouble driving a herd up. But I know they're looking at it. All they see is new cars for the hobbies you know. You're not just trying to spite them, huh? Get them vexed. Not at all. I just... It's a grand spot up there. I don't know. They over the whole day? They got here about two. They've gone for lunch in the arms. Left their story straight. They were gone now about half four. They have no attachment to the place, no? No, they don't. They look around and it's... Ah, yeah, you know? It's gas. <laughs> Were you in Carrick yourself? I was. Flew in about 11, threw on a fast bet. Jimmy was there. We went for a quick one in the plow. How is he? In the ma. Ah, oh, Jimmy. Being tonight, huh? Got us onto a nice one. 11 to 4, we got her up. Oh, you're learning to listen now. Huh? Oh, fuck that, sure. You know, I have been having the worst one of shit you wouldn't believe. I was that desperate to listen to anybody. I'll go on after this. Uh, but, you know, he was telling me. You know about Maureen Eland's house? No. Uh, Jimmy says he met Finbar Mac down in the spa, and uh, he's finally sold or has rented the thing. After how many years it's had to? It is. Four or five in any way. Uh, Jim says five this month. And uh, Finbar's going bananas, you know, the great fella that he is, patting himself on the back, good old, and going on about the new resident, who he says is a fine girl, single, down from Dublin and all this. Huh? Finbar's nearly leaving the wife to have a chance with this one. I'm only messing like what? He is bringing her in here tonight. Huh? Bringing her in for a drink. It's the nearest place to old morals. Huh? He's going to introduce her to the natives. A dirty bastard. I don't want him using in here for that sort of carry on, a married man like him. Yeah, it's only old shit, huh? He wouldn't have the nerve. Besides, how far he get with that fucking head? Ah, huh? uh, no, he's only having a little thrill bringing her around. But I tell you what it is as well. He's the one. He's the one that's with her, in whatever the fucking sense we're talking about, right? And uh, there's you and me and the Jimmy fella, the muggins, the single fellas, right? And he's the married fella. And he's going, well, there's obviously something the fuck wrong with you, huh? You're single and you can't get a woman near this place. Look at me, I hitch, and over and done with it. And I'm having a beat of Yeah, that's the way cunts always go about their business. It's intrusive, it's bad manners. It's juvenile yeah. carry-on is what it is. Let her come in here herself. So. Yeah, that'd be better. It'd make more sense for fuck's sake. Yeah. Leave her be. I don't know what's stay. Nah. Yeah. I don't want to leave Jimmy in the lurch, but Finbar and I were over big business. Fuck it, Jimmy talking about that crap with Finbar. <laughs> You know that uh, Jimmy's got more going on up here than most people give a shrimp. Don't we know too well, for God's sake? Right. We know only too well. Hey, would you give us a ten minutes of cup, please, Brent? Red? Yes. All right. Close enough. Cheers. Now, I know it will be at you. I'll keep at you, though. About what? Ah, uh, don't be at to the mask. Come on. Come on, a young fella like you, the right going concern here. The odd time, you know, the odd time I think about it. You sure? Well, then so should you. I <laughs> think you go on. An old fellow like me. What, you listen to him? What do I want to be doing, giving him my freedom? Well, then me as well. There's <laughs> a lot to be said for the old independence. Ah, there is. <laughs> a lot to be said for mm. <coughs> Cheers. Good luck. Oh, yeah.
best friend and my luck is changing. I got me and that Jimmy fell onto a nice one today. That fellow want to start listening to me more often, I tell you. I'm going to have to start charging you for my tips, son. Ah, James. What do you have? Oh, teach you some manners. Teach you some manners there, Brendan. For a small one, please, Jack. Small one. Ten. That wind still up? Oh, yeah. yeah. More than money to put manners on me. Not take a bomb under you. <laughs> bomb is right. Ah, you right? Now we are. Jimmy, they wait till up. Oh yeah, it's warm enough though. Yeah, we were just saying. We're for northerly. Oh, that's from the west now. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's a westerly. Must shift. Thank <laughs> 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 right you. Good luck. Good luck. Cheers. Hey, what do you think tomorrow? Uh, about what time? Ah, I've got to get out to Connor Bowl. His tractor's packed up, and I've had Father Donald's jalopy in since Tuesday. Said he'd changed the oil, and I haven't done it. Would you ever come in and do it so I can get out to Bowl? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it'd have to be early. I'm dropping the mother off to slide them. Oh, whatever. It's all right. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Hi. Not for the moment. Go on. Hi, please, Brendan. You want to call this? Medicinal. Ah, huh? oh, the chap's fucked. Well, I was wondering, like, what did your man do with him now, you know? Yeah, he'd be the fella that had a figari, and only be drinking bottles from now on, he would. Huh. You would be you to a fucking tea. How's your mammy today? Uh, you know. I gotta get out there and see her. Keep safe. Well, whatever. Whatever you want. Do you think you'll do anything? No. About up there in the and all that. Well, well, sure. Where would it be going with that? I was talking to Finder Mac. He said he'd be lucky to get 20000 for the place. And where would you be going with that, you know? With the acre. Yeah, with the whole, the whole thing. Uh, you're grand with a few jobs around here. Yeah. And he'd be cozy enough. Well, Jack was telling me about Finbar and the new... Uh, oh, yeah. I was telling him earlier. I was telling him. Well, I see what <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Finbar's car got it from the head. Oh, fucking hell. Like a court and couple or something. But he's showing her the area. Jesus, the area. Huh? What a terrible fucking tick. What is he doing, you know? Well, it, well, it's the only place near to her. I'm sure be, Jim. She can find her own way. Come well, on. Well, it's, you know, if it's courtesy, which is one thing, in a business act or whatever, you know you have to say, well, okay. And, but if it's all messy, I'm trapped in here behind this fucking thing, and you wish you'd stop back in the mess, but I have to respect well, whatever. This is it. You know, we're here. I mean, it probably really isn't anything anyway. What age would she be allowed, Jim? <laughs> uh, uh, well, I only saw her for a sec, I'd say. This is in Fibber's car. But I'm in her forties, very good looking. Dublin woman. Oh, Dublin. <laughs> 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 no one in the air, you know. You know she's, uh, she's coming down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good luck. Cheers. Good luck, boys. Another week or two, you'd be seeing the first of the Germans. Mm -hmm. Straight to the evening, yeah. You still wouldn't think about clearing one of them fields for a few carrots. Uh, the top field. Ah, uh, there wouldn't be a lot of shelter up there, Jack. There'd be a wind up there to cut you. But you know what you could do? I mean, the herd up there would be grass, but you could, you know, uh, down here. They do be around anyway, you know yourself. You know that they do. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be chasing the extra revenue. Or the work. They do be coming around right enough. I'll leave the can sites to Finbar and the source mouse. <laughs> In bars and Eve, a few shekels. Oh, he's in dire need of a few bob. The poor fella, that's right. That's right. Yeah, if you had all the families out there on the Hollyers and all the kids and all, you'd feel the evenings turning when they'd be leaving. And whatever about how quiet it is now, it'd be fucking shocking quiet then. You know? Small one, Jack. Go on. Two small ones, The small fellas. You have one yourself? Well, I'm debating what to have one. I have one. Don't be acting the mess. Huh? Go on, then. Come here. Brendan? Facts it all, huh? Ah, go on. They're good for you. Go on. <laughs> Keep the chill out. This is it. Cheers. Cheers, man. Good luck. No.
It's your car. No. That's Finbar's car. It's parked. I didn't see the lights. He came around the dock. Get out the town and you're in here. Ah, oh, there we are now. That's it now. Huh? Man, this is Valerie. She just moved into Mara Newland's old house. Hello. How are you? Hello. This is Jack Mullen. Owns a little garage up around the knock. No. Uh, this is Jim Curran. Does a bit of work with Jack. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this is Brendan. Brendan Byrne. Hello. How are you? This is his bar and all the land they're showing you now. All back down the hill. That's all oh. his farm. Right. It's all lovely here. Oh, yeah. It's a grand spot all along for Going for a walk of that, up down the cliffs. Oh, it's lovely all around here. What you have? Oh, I'll get this in, Barlow. What, what do you want? Oh, no. Uh, I'll have a fight then, Brendan. What says you if it's going now? Hark, please. Jack. In Brendan. Bar. What would you like, Valerie? Um, could I have, do you have a glass of white wine? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm just going to run in the house. Oh, no, don't, don't put yourself to me. Oh, it's no trouble. I have a bottle. Ah, you probably have a bottle of old vino from second Christmas, huh? It's not too often the wine gets me flowing around here. Ah, I'm all embarrassed now. Ah, don't be silly. Sit up there now. Don't mind us. Don't mind these country fellas now. Ah, jeez, you're not too far out of it yourself, says the man, huh? Oh, they're only jealous, Valerie, because I went to town to seek my fortune, and they stayed out here in the bog, picking their holes. <laughs> not too far to seek, just a quick look in Big Finbar's wheel, it's more like it. Oh, Big Finbar's wheel, that's shrewd investment, by the side for the gap. Yeah, he probably fleeced you at Maureen Eland's house, did he? I have to say, I don't think so. Ah, good girl. But it's very reasonable all around here, isn't it? Ah, it is, yeah. Is there much doing up on it? Uh, hardly any. Well, one or two floorboards, a bit of paint, so. Yeah. Here's your man, if you're looking for a good pair of pants. Is that right? Well, I have a look at it, if you like. I know that house. Don't be charging her through the nose now. I am. Yeah, you want to be giving her a neighborly rate, is the thing. Uh, no. Jeez, well, you're looking to give neighborly rate, huh? It wasn't by giving a neighborly rate that you bought up half the fucking town. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> half the fucking town. Yeah, about the whole town. <coughs> I for the gap, you see. I for your gap. <coughs> some drawer. That was a present of some 2008 now. Vintage. <laughs> I hope it's all right now. That's grand. I want to know the difference. I think it's all right. But <laughs> <laughs> you give the woman the fucking thing. The tongue is hanging out of here. Thanks, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous. I'm not joking now. That's lovely. Good. I'm putting it in the fridge for you, Larry. How'd you do today, boys? Oh, you caught me with this fella. Eleven to four, we got her. Right. Came down to six to four. Sheer delight, was it? Uh, Kenny, down at the shop, the knacker, adjusting everything how this fella's been. Oh, look who's talking. All oh, right, but he hardly ever listens to me. Oh, he's too proud, Jimmy. He's too proud to admit when he needs a tip off you. Well, you know, I mean, I have my policy on this, and I have my principle. See, usually that, or usually not all the time. Jim's not too far off the mark. He's not too far off the mark now. He's banging the nail he is now. Well, not all the time, Jim. Oh, thanks, thanks, Mr. Ah, oh, he is, he is. You bang on the nail from judgment is one thing, and uh, Jim knows I don't mean anything by this, and <clears throat> I know it because we've spoken about this before, but uh, he has a scientific approach, right? He studies the form, right? And uh, fair play to him. He's got plenty of time to be doing that, huh? Uh, but, you know, he studies it, Barry. Uh, do you have any horses? Uh, no. Oh, good girl. Well, uh, he and how much, Jim, would you make in a month on the horses? Well, uh, I'd say it only gives out, Jack, but I don't... Like, uh, when Cheltenham was on that time, how much did you win? Uh, 220. 220 pounds, Barry. Like in three days, right? Yeah, but, uh... Well, I know there would have been a bigger win, but, um, you know, he was tinkering with the forms every day before the day race, you know? And he'd be up here with the paper on the counter, huh, Brendan, before Cheltenham? Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm more, um, like, um, I'll have an old bet, like, you know the way? And to tell you the truth, I don't be too bothered by it, right? So I, I'm not going to listen to do this and do that and you'll be all right just for a few bob. Huh? There's no <laughs> fun in that. And besides, the principle of it, you know. Oh, the principle of the thing is to win a few quid and, and don't be given out. Who's given out? I'm not giving out. All I'm saying is the principle's not the science. It's the luck. 
It's not something that's in the facts and figures up. Jesus, and, and do you and Kenny get down on your knees and lash out a few quick Hail Marys before he stabs your talking or something? I'm not talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. What the hell are you talking about? You took a tip today from Jimmy and you won, so what are you talking about? It's just that you know... If huh? you, well, well, if you'd listen to me, I don't know if you're going to listen. It's just that uh, I, I don't have a system. And I do. I lose a few bob every now and then. And then I will take a little tip from Jim, and that will finance having a couple of bets over the next few weeks, right? And I've had one or two winnings myself, as well as two No, I've had one or two. Do not go out of that your chance. I'd say the last win you had was fucking red rum or something. <laughs> we only mess it like this bad. What would anyone like? Uh, Jim. Oh, uh, small one. Thank you, Mr. Jack, small one, pint? Bottles, is it? You're in the bottles. No, the tab is fucking. Oh, simple. Now I have a small one. No. Good man. Gallery. Oh no, I'm okay for the whole thing. Are you sure now? You oh, talked that up? I'm fine, honestly. Are you sure? Oh, really? I'm fine. Okay, fair enough for both portion. Okay. Give us a, a, three small ones, Brendan. Good man. Here, are you having one? I'm debating whether to have one. <laughs> I don't want to have one. Who knows when you'll get another free drink off a of thin bar fella, huh? Go on, pick his all I know you're having. Oh, just listen to him. That fellow keep a banana in his pocket. Exactly. <laughs> well, for, for the first time I've been in here for ages now, bringing in nice company and, and everything, right? Getting this is not what that is. Oh, boy, you got to watch out for Jimmy Phillips. There's more going on there than he lets off, you know? Oh, look at this. You find your drinks like you're like a feckin' idiot. It's not right. What do you think, Valerie? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's desperate. There you go, Brennan. Wouldn't say you see too many twenties in here with your buys. Wouldn't be too often, I'd say, no. Cheers, boys. Check that. Cheers. Good luck. Good luck, Dad. Cheers. How do you show that that fella showing you around, huh? Ah, uh, he was a bit quieter today. Ah, we have seen the real him now. I bet you prefer the other one. We haven't seen it, the quiet thing, by. This one comes out at night, you see. Ah, uh, well, I was getting a bit of the history of the place. Oh, you the history of the place, huh? You're probably making it up on the spot, right? Oh, yeah, I was, yeah. That's why all the photographs are fake. You know, I had it done years ago just to fool Valerie tonight. Oh, that's right. That's all around here, is it? Yeah, that's the, the weir. Oh, when was that taken, Brendan? Uh, that's 1961. 1961. The weir, uh, the river, the weir is to regulate the water for the area generating power and for Carrick as well. Uh, that's your dad there? Yeah. I think your dad's in it too. Oh, he is. Look at this now. That's Big Finbar. That's Brendan's father, Paddy Byrne, and that's when the ESV first opened. It's around here. Big thing around here, Brendan. Oh, yeah. Uh, you look like your father. You don't. Uh, it's like his mother, like the Mangans. Uh, now, who would you say is that there in the shorts? Is it you? Did you go on big fucking head on that joke? Excuse the language, Valerie. Uh, that's Jack. Oh my God! How old were you there, Jack? Yeah, it's about seven. Who uh, just said that was you? Well, you must be joking. You'd spot that big mutton head anywhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the photographer nearly had to ask him to go home. There wasn't going to be room in the picture. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> that right, Jack? That's right. And that's your dad there, nearly climbing into the camera. Well, he was a pillar of the community, Valerie. Nobody had anything against him except headers like your mom here. That's right. And I'm going to go in here and do something up against the pillar of the community right now. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> desperate fellow, that one. And where was this taken? Oh, that's the view of Carrick from our top field up there. Oh, it's an amazing view. Oh, I'd say that's probably one of the best views all around here now. Would it be? Yeah. So, it would be, yeah. Did you get all the Germans stricken up here in the summer, Valerie? Up from the comp site. Oh, right. Yeah, they do come up, you know, this be the scenic part of all around here. There's, um, there's what's, uh, there's stories that all the fairies would be up there in that field. Isn't there a fort up there? There's kind of a one. A fairy fort? Yeah, the Germans, they do love all this. Well, there's a ring of trees, you know. Yeah, well, what's the story about the fairy road? Who used to tell it? Ah, uh, Jack tell you all the stories. <laughs> uh, that's the Abbey right there now. Jack, you know, the, uh, what the, you know if you're Jim, right? But Jack can tell you better than me. You can see more of it here, right over there. Oh, 
That's a scenic area. What's the story with the ferry road now? Uh, uh, back back in all 15 something, there was uh, Senator Bishops that all uh, came and met there at the Abbey for like. Uh, oh. Well, this, this townland used to be quite important back a few hundred years ago, Valerie. Yeah. Um, it would have been the capital of the county. Oh, right. Yeah, it's a very interesting place and all, right? Yeah. Uh, Jack, we were just saying about, what was the story with Ferry Road? Uh, where, where was it? The Ferry Road? I go to the toilet for two minutes. <laughs> I can't leave you alone for two minutes, huh? Oh, we're just telling Valerie about, about the fourth and everything. Oh, are you really interested? All the babies. Oh, it's a bit of fun now. Tell her where it is. Well, you're going to regret me telling you this now, because you know whose house it was. Whose? It was Maura Nealon's <coughs> house. Oh. Jesus. Well, you see, that's as much cop as you have now. I fucking forgot it was Maura. Well, uh, these are only old stories, Sally. Oh, I'd like to hear it's it. It's only old card life. Yeah, yeah, you could be scared of a woman now. It's not scary. I'm interested in it. I uh, hear all old shit about here. Doesn't mean anything. This is a good news story. Uh, it's only short. It's just that, you know, more at me. I used to come in here every evening and sit over there by the fire. Uh, how old was she, Jim, when she died? Oh, she is. She must have been nearly 90. Yeah. She's a grand woman, huh? Sprightly, right to the end. You know? mm -hmm. Had all her, um, the, she was on the ball. And um, she lived in that house all her life. Right? And she swore this happened when she was a little girl. She had older brothers and sisters. She was the youngest. Uh, her mother and the bridey. Bridey. Uh, she was a well-known woman in the area. The widow. Bit of character. Bit of pathful joker. And Maury say when she was young, she was a uh, more, uh, <coughs> to say, uh, bridey used to play these jokes on the older kids, right? She was always like holding and hiding their clothes and things like that, and telling old fibs about what a certain prospective boyfriend or girlfriend had said about them on the road, and about this one coming court and that, you know. And um, she used to shout from upstairs, you know, there's someone at the door. And she used to say, there's someone at the back door, there's someone coming up the path, you know, this. And there was never anyone there. And people got used to it. Like, she liked her jokes. And, uh, Maury used to say that one evening, about 1910, 1911, when the older kids were getting ready to go out for the dance, or whatever was happening, the mother, Bright, came down the stairs and said, did no one get the door? And everybody was like, oh no, here we go, you know? But Bright came down and opened that door. And there was nobody there. And she wasn't saying anything. And she didn't make a big thing out of it, you know? But Morris said she was young, but she knew something was wrong, because she wasn't cracking the jokes. And later on, when the others were all out, it's just the two of them sitting there at the fire. And normally, Bridie would send Maura up early in the flight. But Maura remembered this night because Bridie didn't send her up. She wanted someone with her, you see. And in, in those days, Valerie, as you know, there was no electricity up here. And there's no dark like a winter night in the country. <coughs> and there was a wind like this one tonight, howling, whistling in off the sea, like someone singing in, like someone singing in under the door, actually. It was this type of wind tonight. Am I setting the scene for it? Ah, uh, look at Finbar's looking a little edgy. You want to finish that small one? <laughs> Never mind my small one, Jack. You're making very heavy weather in this yarn. Oh, you have to enjoy it, huh? You have to relish the details of something like this, huh? So, there they were, sitting there. And they were staring into the fire. And Bridie was smiling, now and again at Maura. But Maura could see a little bit of wet in the mother's eye. And then, there was a knocking at the door. Someone. Bridie never moved. And Maura said, oh, shall, shall I get the door, Nanny? And Bridie said, oh, no, sure. It's only someone having a joke. Don't mind them. And then it stopped. And they sat there for a while. And um, in, in those days, Valerie, there was no kitchen. Where the extension is, that was the back door. And it only had, like, a little latch on it. And that's where next knocking was. Very soft, Morris said. 
very low in the door. Not up here where you'd expect a grown man or woman to be knocking. And again, right, he said, oh, it's only someone having a joke. They'll go away. Maura couldn't see out at night, and her mother wouldn't let her get up and go over. The two just sat there. And then later, when the fire went down, Bridie wouldn't get up to get more turf for the fire because it was out in the shed. So the two just sat there till the others came back. Well, after midnight. What was it? Well, Bridie and Maura said they never told the others. But one day, when it was just the two of them, a priest came by and blessed the doors and windows. And there was no one knocking then, she said. And then, more had learned later on from one of the older people in the area that that house had been built on what you'd call a fairy road. Though it really wasn't a road, it was more like um, a road of things. A road of things. You see, like from the fort up in Brendan's top field, to the well, to the abbey further down, into the cove where the pebbly beach is. And the legend would be that the fairies would come down that way to bathe, you see. And that house was built on what you'd call a fairy moon. And they wanted to come through. Well, that'd be the idea. The Mora said she'd never heard any knocking again except one time in the 1950s, when the weir was going on. Bit of knocking then, she said, and a fierce load of dead birds on the hedge and all this. That's the story. You're not bothered by that, are you, Valerie? Because it's only old cod, you know. Well, I think all such a stuff. All around here now. Probably something in them. No, I do. Might be all right. Doesn't hurt. Tell me what, but a terrible thirst. Battery, top there. Um, ah, she will go on now, Brendan. Oh, this glass is fine. Good girl, country ways. Finbar, pint. Oh, pint. Oh, why not, says you? Give me. Ah, right. Uh, two pints and uh, one of these, please. Two pints. Yep. Oh, yeah. Have one yourself. Okay. <laughs> Who's winning? I have to draw. I'm going to have a glass. Ah, good man. Have two now, huh? Sorry. Uh, I will, thanks. Oh, good girl. Hey, Mark. So, I'm on text, Jack. I've had one of them fellas now 18 years this November. 18 years, huh? 18 years. Not Eight. since I made the move down to Carrick. Please, I remember that. You don't look any better for us. What do I am? Let us see who looked the better after a round or two of fifty footwork, yeah? <laughs> And you were the long hanging out your back, right? Jesus, an old fellow like me, ten or more years between us, and you wanting to put on a few dicks on business, killer instinct. That's a life and gap, you know, exploit, exploit the weakness. Oh, speaking of the weakness, eh? Uh, didn't you have a little run-in with the fairies, or who was it that time before you went? Ah, oh, Jesus, now. Oh, come on, you were great that time. Yeah, come on now. Uh, For fuck's sake. Come on, big man like you, huh? No bollocks. <laughs> come on. The sucking of the fairy roads and all this. It wasn't the fairies, it was the Walsh young one having us all on now. It's just a old cod for sure. Well, she's an American now, Nave Walsh. It was Nave that time, yeah. Ah, it's just a header looking for attention, yeah. What happened? This was the brave lad. Ah, stop it, it was nothing. It was his, fa his family lived up beside Big Finbars, the Walshes. Ah, they were only blow-ins he was a garden. Blow-ins, like me. Oh, my God, you know what I mean. Uh, Careful, you're going to be losing business with them. Uh, she knows what I mean. Okay, but Valerie's very welcome here now. She knows that, don't you? Stop embarrassing her and just tell the story. Uh, Janie, now you've got her in a haunted house already. She won't be able to sleep. No, I'd like to hear it. It's not even a real one. Yeah, stop your moaning and just tell us the story. <laughs> just a crowd of headbangers is all it was. There was a house out near where we were on the other side of not there, Valerie. It would have been the nearest place to us, about a quarter mile down the road. And the old lad Finnerty lived on his own down there. And his family got him into a nursing home out by them in Westport. And the people that moved in were the Walsh's. And your man was a sergeant in the guards. And he was like 50 odd and still only a sergeant. 
So he was like, no, Sherlock Holmes, you know. Uh, he, he wasn't Walsh in a yard or anything like that, you know. And they moved in and they had three teenagers, daughters, and a young fella that was married back near Longford there. And the daughters were, were with him and the missus. And I knew him a little bit because that was the year that Big Finbar died, God rest him. And they arrived about the time of the funeral. And uh, I met them then, and I was living on my own because me and Big Finbar were the only two in it at the time. You know, I was the bachelor boy, right? And after a gaggle of young ones come moving in next door, right? He would go home, you know? <laughs> I was, uh, I've been wondering what to do, Valerie. You know, at that time, I was 22, 23, you know, whether to sell it on or to farm it. And it would have been about 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock this night, there was a knock at the door, and it was Mrs. Walsh, and she was all upset, asking me if I could come in. You know, she didn't know. Anyone in the area, you know, the husband was at work, he was out on the call, and they have been a bit of trouble. What kind of trouble is this? And she says that she was after getting a phone call from the young Neof, and they were after doing the Luigi board. Luigi board? The Luigi board. He was down there in a chippering character, like she's out Fuck off, okay? You know what I meant, okay? She was actually down in the... You're the Luigi board. That's right. She was doing the Luigi board, okay? She was uh, uh, getting a phone call from her mother, right? And um, and uh, she was scared. They were doing the Luigi board, right? And they were after getting the spirit of this. And she was scared. Asked her mother to come and collect her. You know, and I you know, obviously thought this was just a load of bollocks. It, 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 it excuse the language, by the way. But he was the mother saying that she'd gone and picked her up, you know? And I'm sorry, but it was all a bit mad, you know? But then they, they'd seen something on the way back, and the mother had seen it as well. There was like a dog on the road, you know, running with the car, running after it. And there's dogs all around here, Valerie. You used to be seeing them, you know, the farmers all have them. You know, there was that Jack, that big dog that uh, Willie McDermott had Jesus that time. Christ, it was huge. If you saw it from the distance, you thought it was a small horse. It was gigantic. Was Saxon. That was it, Saxon. It was an Irish wolfhound. He got him up a fellow from the north. Yeah, it was huge. You'd be seeing dogs all around the place. They'd be tame-like, you know, all kinds. But their bark would be worse than their bite. So, you know, I wasn't too taken with the story. But she wanted me to come down to the house. Because when they got back to the house, the young woman was going hysterical, saying that she could see something on the stairs. Like no one else could see it down. But she could, and it was a woman looking at her. And Mrs. Walsh didn't know what to do, you know. And she was kind of panicking, so... I don't know what it was that she thought that I could do. But we got in the car and we went down. And Jesus now. A young one was in bits. We had a blanket around her and she was white now, as white as that shirt. She was whiter because that's probably filthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not messing now. She wouldn't come out of the living room because she thought there was something on the stairs looking at her like a woman, you know, and I said, you know, what's the woman doing? And she said, she's just looking at me. Well, she was terrified. Well, I don't know whether she was after taking drinks or drugs or what she was after doing, so I says the phone for Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe down in Carrick. Yeah, Joe Dillon Valerie, you know, this is, uh, you've seen him around the town. He still has his surgery there beside the spar. A very nice fella. Got through to him now. He was on his way. The young one was shouting at me to close the living room door because the phone was out in the hallway and she could see the woman looking at her over the banister like she was that bad now. So Mrs. Walsh phoned for Father Donald, got him out of bed and fair deuce like he'd come down and sort of blessed the place a little bit. And he'd be more about it too, you know, there wouldn't be much of all the demons of that kind carrying on with him. Yeah, Jesus, <laughs> he collapse, you know, him and a demon, you know, just like that. <laughs> and so, you know, Dr. Joe gave her a sedative and off she went then, right? We all had a little drink about it and poor Mrs. Walsh was understandably, you know, very shaken and everything. But Father Donald, you know, he told her not to mind Luigi, you know, that it was only old cod and it was just young uh, Neve's imagination and all this. But then the phone rang, right? And it was the young fellow that brought her back in Longford there, and he was all that. His baby was crying, right? He had it out of the cot, and he was standing by the window. And he could see, like, all this commotion next door, you know, like cars in a drive and all this. And it turned out that 
that an old one that used to mind me of and the other sisters when they were young and all this, who was bedridden and been found dead at the bottom of the stairs. She fallen out and they found her. All right, okay, whatever now. A coincidence. But uh, that night at home, I was having a last fight before the sack, you know, and uh, sitting at the fire. And Jack, you know the house now. The stairs, they, they come right down into the main room. I'll tell you, it's stupid now. But at the time, I couldn't turn around. I couldn't get up to go to bed because I thought there was something on the stairs. And I sat there looking at an empty fireplace until it got bright, you know, I was just like a boy, you know, that way. I would move in case something saw me. I wouldn't even light another fag like I was fucking dying for one, right? But I wouldn't. Fucking mom. Then it got bright tonight, you know, and everything was grand, you know, and obviously there was nothing there or anything like that. But that was the last fag I ever had. And the Walsh's, they moved away right after that, yep. That was when you moved down to Carrick? Yeah. That's why they had something to do with it, I don't know. We moved down into the lights. So. Might be home. Might be all right. Didn't want the loneliness, maybe. I think I'm fucking middle of the night. I'm the head of this you. I'm gonna powder my nose, I think. Yeah, we knew you were a fucking head banger. Do it all along. <laughs> Who's getting married, Finbar? 
Well, do you know Mila Donnelly? Declan Donnelly's girl. Uh, used to work for me in the arms. Gas young with you. I uh, used to be pals with Declan there, Jim. Oh, well, yeah. He did. Ten years as well. Well, God bless him. My fellow. Yeah, gas young one, you know. New, the daughter, you know. Call me new, she says, first day working for me in arms, right? She wasn't afraid to speak for herself or anything like that. She used to tell us uh, who was having affairs and all this. She knew the couples that were being all in this seat. She would go there and there, she was a chambermaid. She'd go into the room in the morning, right? And the bed would be already made, right? The woman in the affair would have done it out of guilt, you see, you know, covered all up for herself, you know, as much for anyone else, you know. Oh, she was a mad young one, right? Would you get many people using the hotel like that? No! It's just me while I was a gabber and a talker is all. Who did she get married to, Finbar? Ah, uh, some for, uh, fella out in, for outside the country here. Must be the Spartans, you know. Be shame a young one get married to an old fella like that. He must have plenty of money be like getting married to that, you know. He's got a nice little stash hidden away in the garage, I tell you, hoping to trap some young thing with it. Isn't that right? Man? That's my plan. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful of the old lads, right? They get a big pot of stew now that's constantly on the heat, right? Every couple of days they keep, you know, you know, throwing a few bits of scraps in it, you know, maybe survive on that, that do you, don't it, Jack? It's a feast every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dreadful fellas, you know, then, then they manage to get a girl, right? And it does be like on everything, right? Uh, you know, the, your man, after living in uh, two rooms all his life, the poor girl had to get in there and clean it all out, you know. 30 years of old newspaper clippings, cheap trillers, you know, all lying there in the dump since her mommy's died. Last bit of cleaning, and on in the place. Isn't that right there, Jack? Hey, that's us to a T. Jay, speak for yourself. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Chris, man, you know, they be changing the sheets in the bed every Christmas. Soup <laughs> 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 and rashes, bits of egg, pudding on the floor, you know. Poor girl. Oh, yeah, the poor girl is right. So the least that I can do for her now is to make sure that her reception in the arms is just a little memory for her to have in the future. And the cold nights now, cheers. You have got a terrible warped mind, you know that? Oh, yeah, sure, just telling it like it is. Noella, get married. You just don't feel the time. Mm -hmm. No. I remember, well, it must have been 20 more years ago, doing a job with him. Declan, talking about what you were saying earlier. The priest over in Glen was looking for a couple young fellas to do a bit of work. Now he's in Clara, in the arms. And he'd come over from Glen, you know. That was not nothing. Like, what is he doing coming all that way just to find a couple young fellas? And uh, 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 he's in the arms, and Declan Donnelly knocks up to him. And uh, and he's, he, he sorts him out, you know, there's a few quid in it, and he knocks up to me, and we're to go to the church in Glen the following day. And I remember... Table tennis. And the ambulance man was giving her the kiss of life, and she was in her bathing suit. And the ambulance man said he didn't think what he was doing was work, and, and he didn't know if she was alive. And he wrapped her in a towel, and he carried her up to the ambulance. And they climbed in the back with him, and they radioed on ahead. They were going to put her on a machine in Beaumont and try to revive her there. But the ambulance man knew, I think, you know, she wasn't breathing. And he just knew, and he said, if I wanted to say goodbye to her, the ambulance case who didn't get a chance at the hospital. And I gave her a little hug. She was freezing cold. And I, I told her mommy loved her very much. She just looked to sleep. And her lips had gone blue. She was dead. Thank you. 
plagued me. He just became very busy in his work, just keeping himself. And I was, you know, I just, I, I, I was more like, I didn't really know what I was doing. Just walking around, wanting to, just sitting around the house with Daniel's mother, fussing about the place, just months of this, not really talking about it, like. And then one morning, I was in bed. Daniel had gone to work. I usually lay there for several hours, just trying to stay asleep, really, I suppose. And the phone rang. And I just left it. I wasn't going to get it. And it rang a long time. And eventually it stopped, and I was dropping off again. And then it started ringing again. And it rang a long time, so I thought, like, it must be Daniel trying to get to me, someone who knew I was there. So I went down to answer it, and the line was very faint. It was, it was like a crossed line. I could hear voices, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. And then I heard Mia. She said, Mommy. And I just said, you know, yes. And she said she wanted me to come and collect her. And I mean, I didn't know if this was a dream or her leaving this had been a dream. And I just said, where are you? And she said she thought she was at Nana's, but Nana wasn't there. And she was scared. There were children knocking in the walls. And the man was standing there. And he was looking up. And he was going to cross the road. And would I come and get her? And I said, I would, of course I would. And I dropped the phone and I ran out the car in just a t-shirt I slept in. And I drove to Daniel's mother's house. And I could hardly see, I was crying so much. I mean, I knew she wasn't going to be there. I knew she was gone. But to think that wherever she was, that and there was nothing I could do. got a doctor and I slept for a day or two, but it was, Daniel felt that I needed to face up to me of being gone, but I thought that he should face up to what happened to me. He kept insisting I get some treatment and then everything would be okay. But I mean, what can help that if she's out there? She's still... You don't think it could have been a dream you were having? I heard. Uh, sure, Valerie. You're after getting a terrible shock now. These things can happen now. Your brain is trying to deal with it. Is your husband going to come down? I don't think so. I'd be a terrible shame if you don't, you know. If you didn't see him, because of something that you don't even know what it was. She said she knew what it was. I'm sure you just can't accept that. You got to look at the broader thing of it here now. But if I could a wrong number. What? It could have been uh, a wrong number or something. <laughs> oh. And then you think you heard it and, and uh, something on the line. But you wouldn't hear someone's voice in the fucking thing, Jim. Well, it's just that it might have been something else. Easy, Brendan. Jim's just trying to talk about the fucking thing. Oh, right? that's... Just take it easy. No, stop. I I don't want... It's, it's something that happened. And it's nice just to be here and hear what you're saying. I know I'm not crazy. Nobody's going to think that now, Valerie. But it's just that, you know... You hear all sorts of old cod all around here, you know, but usually there's some kind of explanation for it, right? I mean, uh, Jim himself said he was delirious with the food at that time. I had right temperature. Uh, 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 Maura Meehan, uh, she was in here every night of the week, Brendan, about how much would she drink, be honest now. How much did she drink? Have some respect, Finn Carter. I'm trying to make a point here, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> the woman was a drinker. <laughs> We're all drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Now, who wouldn't be here?
you're knocking after that. Now you're not being fair. The woman is dead and she can't defend herself. I'm not casting anything on her. If she was alive, if she came through that door right now, I'd be buying her drink. I'd be the first to buy her a drink and more power to her. I hope she didn't know it. I'd be the first to buy her a drink, but I'm going to write a bar myself down in the arms. And I know all too well what a right few drinks will do to you. She liked to drop us what I'm saying. What about you and the Walshes? How many times do I have to say it? They're all a bunch of fucking headbangers! Fair enough. I got the wind put at me that night when I was young. I resent that now, what I went through. But that's over with. Fucking headbangers. After all that, I'm ignoring the bigger thing here, Valerie. I'm very sorry about your daughter. I'm very sorry indeed. Of course we are. We, we all are. That's terrible. I'm afraid we'll have to go now. I don't want to, but... Okay. Ah, I do. I'll leave her down. But she might want to come on now, no. Uh, have yeah. another drink and relax for a little while. Yeah, I think I'm going to hang on for another little while. All right. You got to go easy on the old stories now. Uh, don't be such an old woman. She'll be grand. All right. <coughs> She'll be grand. Uh, can I get a lift, Edward? Of course you can, Jim. You're going to be okay for Father Donald's car in the morning. Yes, sir. Good. Meet me at quarter after nine. I just got to get out to bowl. Brendan. Nagin. Oh, please. Yep. Well, Valerie. It was very nice to meet you. I'm very sorry about what's happened to you. And I know that your girl is safe and comfortable wherever she is. And I'm going to say that it's her for her time. But she doesn't need it. She is a saint, a little innocent. And, and, and that, that man in the churchyard was just a figment of a fever dream and bad pointing. Listen, listen to Finbar. He's, he's right. You should get your peace and quiet. And I'll see you again. It's very nice. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Jim. How are you Thanks for everything. It's quite all right. And I'll call up to you the next day or two. Right? Um, we're going to see how you're settling in with us. Thanks for everything. Good bar. Jack. In bar. Good to see you now. See you soon, huh? Brendan! You got yourself in bar. He's there. I won't leave it so long next time. Okay. Good night. Good night, Jim. See you soon. See you in the morning. Good night. See you still. Personal like that. It's happened to you. You ever get over something like that, I wonder? I don't mean the phone call. I don't know. Did you really mean there was anything wrong with your phone? You're very sorry. Come on, we sit near the stove. It's getting cold. We'll have a last one. Good idea. Give us your glass, Valerie. Jack, you'll have a small one for the road. Can I get this? No, no. It's on the house now. Bar's officially closed. Go on. Come on. You get yourself in here, huh? It'll be grand in a minute. Why don't you get your little brandy, Valerie? This wine is freezing in the fridge. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks. There we are. Good girl. Oh, 
Jimmy gonna be in a bad way. I hope the same as Mary does, huh? Oh, definitely. She's been very sick, Valerie, for years now. Fading fast, like for years. She still spoils that boy rotten, huh? Oh, definitely. No. All right. That's an awful law. Yeah, uh, there's no law that says you have to drink it all. <laughs> and just pour it back in the bottle. <laughs> no, fuck off. I think we should drink this one to you, Pat. Yes, to Valerie. I hope it's all in the end. Cheers. Cheers. There's the boy. You've no children, Jack, no? Ah, oh, no, darling. I never married. But, uh, and you'd be telling this fellow to be on the lookout uh, to not end up like me. Do you wish you had married? <laughs> sure. Would have me, a cankerous old fucker like me, food rice. Uh, uh, it's a thing, you know. Uh, I tell Brendan. Uh, no. I'm on my own in that uh, garage. Uh, that country road, it was bypassed by the main road in the cab. You know, the, the roof, you know, in the summer, the heat has the place like an oven, the tin roof. If it's not that, it's the rain pelting down into it like bricks, you know, the noise of it. And now you'd be, you know, the only car stop in any somebody that knows the area of the old You definitely feel it like But yeah, you get down here for a pint, and there's something to be said for the company. Somebody there. Oh, yeah. Did you never consider it when you were young? Uh, sure. What the hell else does a young fellow be thinking about? Huh? Like Brent, Brent knows, you know. I, I had a girl. Back then. A lovely girl. We were court for about three years. 1983, 86. She wanted to go off to Dublin. But I felt that's what we should have done. I don't know what it was with me, like an irrational fear, I suppose, that kept me here. But she went up in the end, anyway. Like, uh, she was up there working, waiting for me to come. Uh, with me, it was like a mad thing. You know, I thought it was a thousand fucking miles away. I hated going up. But I, I went up, you know, a few times like. She had a room, freezing damn place. But I was a terrible fellow. You know, turned out that was the only thing I was going up for. You know, I'd be all excited about going up for you know, the physical, the freedom. But, uh, after a day and a night, I'd had my fill. We'd be walking in the park, and I'd be all catty and bored and moochy. breaking that poor girl's heart. You know, you get older, and you look at all the things you've done, and you realize there really wasn't a reason. You do a lot of things out of pure cussedness. I stopped answering her letters, and I fucking dreaded one coming to the house. And her really wondering how I was, and was there something wrong with the post or this? I can't explain what carrying on I was up to. I just left her up. You know, me being the big fella. My dad handed the business over to me and he's swanning around, you know, man of substance. And then I had the gall to feel resentful when she wrote and said she was getting married to a fella and it was all her fucking fault for going up there in the first place. <laughs> There was this uh, delegation of people from all around here going up to the wedding of the boss. And I was just one of the guests, just one of the crowd. Me and my soup, and my shoes nearly polished off me, and a hangover like you wouldn't believe. Because I had been up till five in the morning, spilling this stuff, staring into the fire. 
And we were all on the bus at nine. And the chat all around was, why hadn't she come home to get married? And me, sick as a dog. You know, the smell of brill cream on all of us coaches. We were sitting in that church in Pittsburgh. And her lovely looking nurse girlfriends. And their guard boyfriends. Oh, she was, was married as guard. Huge fella. Shoulders like a big gorilla. <laughs> they were walking down after. And I caught her eye. And I gave her the cheesiest little grin you'd ever seen. Little grin that was like, I'll enjoy your big gorilla. Because <laughs> the future's all ahead of me. <laughs> and she just looked at me like I was another guest at the wedding. And that was that. And the future was all ahead of me. Years and years of it. I could feel it coming. You know, all those things you do on your own, that you got to face on your own all by yourself, you bear it. You bear it because you want to show everybody that you're a great fella altogether. But that really, left that church like a little boy. I couldn't go to that reception. I just walked away. It was a light rain. And I just kept on walking. It was a dark day. There was a roof over the city. And I found myself in this little labyrinth of streets with nothing new. I ducked into this little pub, little dark place, just one or two others there. And a little business-like bar, like yourself, but business-like, beautiful. And I put a pint or two away, a small one or two. And I just sat there staring down at that dirty wooden bar. Arnon asked me if I was all right. I said I was okay. He said he'd make me a sandwich. I said, okay. But I nearly started crying. You know, because someone, it just, and I watched him. And he took two slices off this fresh loaf and buttered them carefully. Spread it all around. I'll never forget. He sliced some cheese and some cooked ham. A little onion out of a jar. He put it all on a plate and I sliced it down the middle. And just someone I didn't know doing this for me. Put it in front of me. He said, now you get that down, you know. And then he, he folded up his paper, got his jacket, and went on a break. It was another bar. And I took that sandwich up. But I could hardly swallow it because of the lump in my throat. A small thing, but a huge thing in my condition. But I ate it all down, and it fortified me like no meal I've had in my life. And then I went to that reception. And there is a humility I've tried to find ever since. But goodness wears off. And it just becomes easier to be a contrary old bollocks. Uh, I don't know. Down in that garage, spinning out small jobs all day. Taking hours to fix a puncture. It stops you thinking about what might have been and what you should have done. It's like looking away. Like I did at that reception. 
You should only catch someone's eye for the right reason. I tell you, there is not one morning I don't wake up with her name at the room. Still, I do be at this fellow, don't I? Okay. I'm going to be on my way now. Will you be okay in that wind? <laughs> I should know that road by now, says you. I'll get you the torch. Ready. Am I a loner? There's well fucking works, I'll tell you. Well, it wasn't a ghost story, at least. <laughs> no. We've had enough of them. We'll all be ghosts soon enough. Sitting here sipping whiskey with old Mora Beatlin all night. <laughs> Fuck it. I didn't mean to go on there. No, please. Yeah. Something about your company inspired it. This, of course. It was lovely to meet you. You too. I wonder if being out here really is the best place for you, though. Why? A girl like you, hiding herself away, missing the old headers like us, going on about fairies, <laughs> having all your worst fears confirmed for you. Ghosts and angels and all this. Fuck it. We won't have it. Because I won't see someone like you being disturbed by it. You've enough to deal with. For fuck's sake. I'm very sorry about what happened to you. Thanks. The batteries are a bit weak. Come on, I'll drop you. Are you sure? Sure, I'll get the battery lit. Come with us. Okay then. Crack. Want to have Brenda? Oh no, stay where you are. I'll be finished in a sec. Valerie, is this thing yours? Yeah, right. <laughs> ah, come on now. Oh, now. Very nice. You see, Brendan, these are the touches. <laughs> oh, that's them. No. <laughs> All right. Ah, that's fair, I think, before I go. Anyone else? Uh, no, I'm not for me. No, I'm grand. Thanks, Jeff. Up early in the morning over to Connor Bowling. It's on the other side of Carrick. It has about 15 fucking kids, the dirty puppets. You should see her. She's built like a fucking tractor. <laughs> I heard about her. You're a terrible man. Actors worse. Will you be in here again soon? Ah, I'm always in and out. You know, I gotta keep the place afloat at least. Uh, don't mind him, Valerie. Him and the Jimmy fella be fierce scarce in here the next few weeks. Oh, why? All the Germans will be coming and they love it in here. You don't like that? He thinks they're too noisy. Well, you don't know what they be saying. Yeah, Jimmy be sitting at that bar with big sour pusses on him, giving out like a couple of old grannies. We're not that bad. You're like a pair of bloody albums. You should see them. Oh. Where do you go instead? Oh, a place in Carrick. The pot. The pot. There must be just as many of them in there. Don't be caught yourself. Oh, it doesn't seem to be as bad down there. Uh, that's because this is your place. You see, Brendan, Valerie is defending us. It is out of respect for this place. It is in my fucking Barney respect. The two were just leaving me standing there behind that bar with my arms folded, picking my hole, and not knowing what the hell was going on, and then playing all old 60 songs on the guitars. And they don't even know the words. And nothing for me to do except pull a few pints and watch the shadow from a knock moving along the floor with the sun going down. I'm like some fucking mender. I do be watching it, watching it creeping up on the Germans, and they don't even notice it. I must be cracking up if that's my entertainment of an evening. Ah, quit your moaning. I tell you what, if Valerie's willing to come in and brave the Germans, then Jim and I will come in and keep you company. Oh, your grace is with you as much as will you? Hey, don't push it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? You're going to have Finbar in here sniffing around Valerie every night, huh? Oh, no, stop. No, he's going to be in here like a fly in a big pile of shite. Will... Oh, fuck, that came across me. No, Jack, that's the kind of thing you No, I Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Would you relax? Uh, 
really is too. But come in. Yeah. With the germ. Yeah. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> see, that's the right attitude. You should stay with the company and the bright lights. You see my keys. Sure, I might even learn some German. Uh, I don't know. Are they German, Brennan? What? The Germans. Huh? We call them Germans. Is <laughs> them. <laughs> yes, thanks. Where are they from? Oh, right from? Is it Denmark or Norway? It's something like that. Uh, I don't know where the fuck they're from.